Hello everyone, my name is Jerry BR and welcome to It Moves, a free-to-play horror game available on Steam, and there is a link down in the description below. Uh, I've kind of forgotten what this is about, so let's just dive right into it. Let me, sorry, I have a separate light here, just so I can be as minimal lighting as possible. Ah, so it's not a click, it's a keyboard. Bedtime. Bedtime is supposed to be a happy event for a tired child. For me, it was terrifying. Well, some children might complain about being put to bed before they have finished watching a film or playing their favorite video game. When I was a child, nighttime was something to truly fear. Somewhere in the back of my mind, it still is. This is me. Oh, I was not expecting a little RPG maker style game. Poster from a movie. I got it from my brother. Full of toys and stuff. Mr. Teddy. It's a wolf. Oh, I thought it was a lamp. It's a bunk bed. I sleep in the top. A table. It's a weird font style, like that A. Is it bold or a different font than the rest of it? But like, I think they were all kind of like that. You know, like the first letter is a different font. It's really weird. Let's turn off the light. I cannot prove that what happened to me was objectively real. But I can swear that what I was experiencing was genuine horror. A fear which in my life I'm glad to say has never been equaled. I will relate it to you. As now, as best I can, make of it what you will, but I'll be glad just to get it off my chest. This is my brother's room. He told me yesterday to keep out of the room that we both had shared until then. It's locked, stupid bro. Flowers. Mom put these here. They block half the hallway, but it's worth it. This is my father. Oh, I thought it was your mother. Well, don't want to talk to you. I can't remember exactly when it started. My apprehension towards falling asleep seemed to correspond with my being moved into a room of my own. This is my mother. Mom told me not to touch her stuff, especially this stuff. It was for her and dad. Private time. Nothing too interesting. A man with a mustache. Is it Tom Selleck? Ventilation. I think Mom said this is... is... Wait, is it on the floor? Or is it... I was eight years old at the time. Until then, I had shared a room quite happily with my older brother. As is perfectly understandable for a boy five years, my senior, my brother eventually wished for a room of his own, and as a result, I was given the room at the back of the house. As my brother was given a new bed, I was given the bunk beds which we used to share. While I was upset about sleeping on my own, I was excited at the thought of being able to sleep in the top bunk, which seemed far more adventurous to me. Wait, is that the front door? I guess I'm going back to my room. knocks. Ooh, could it be? Mother, I just saw you in your room. That's a weird font on mom. Alright, it's bedtime. Already? Yes, adults need their sleep, you see. You'll be sleeping alone for the first time. You excited? I don't know what voice that is for a mother to have. Yes, mom. Night, Mom. Alright, I'm turning off the lights. Good night. Good night. Ah, ah, spooky, scary. Ah, I can look every way except face down in the pillow. Chapter 1 Cave. Oh, is this a dream based game? Save? Sure. Um, oh, I'm down there. 
Do I have like a menu? Nothing. All right, let's see what's going on in this cave. Ah, butterflies. Sup? Oh, I guess I'm not that interested in you. Really? All right. Um. Ah. I'm breaking into someone else's house. Ah. A pot and some ragged cloth. I wonder what's cooking or whom. Hmm. Ah, it's a moving. Stalking is such a strong word. I prefer to think of it as more intense research on one individual. By the way, your missing sock is under your bed with me. Just kidding. Okay, same words. A cold, unwelcoming breeze comes from the bottom of the stairs. Well, obviously go down. You, you find a horror house in the middle of the woods with a basement? Weird mushroom. Looks poisonous. Eat it. Find out. Someone there? Oh, okay. No, no one's there. Weird mushroom. Still looks poisonous. Purple mushroom. Definitely poisonous. I can't see the bottom. Okay. There's red liquid seeping from the mushroom hat. Is it a toad that's been killed? What the fuck was that? I was just about to say, I think, I'm not sure how afraid I am of seeing something in the dark right here. Ooh, it's a puzzle, you say. Well, I like puzzles. Huh, now I just need the exact opposite. Now I need the exact opposite. Way too easy. Well, not not way too easy, but it ended up working out extremely well. I don't know why I look at every single mushroom I see. Well, it's probably fine. It's probably nothing. Why would there be anything there? I just came from that. You weren't even there a second ago. How did you get back in there? It just poofed. Poof. Run. The bridge is gonna break. Ah, it's chasing. Would now be a bad time to stop walking? Ew, it has legs. I'm hoping it was supposed to catch me. Because there were a few times where I stopped walking. For some reason. Mom! I had a bad dream! Mom! Mom! Mommy! Brother! Ugh, what a jerk. No need to go here right now. I shouldn't go outside right now. Mom! 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 I had a bad dream! Mom! Wake up! Wake up! Sweetie, what's wrong? I had a bad dream! Aw, oh, that's too bad, sweetie. I'll be up in a minute and we can eat breakfast together. Alright, hurry up! Go change your clothes and I'll be right there. 
Papa, do you want to talk? This is this is much easier to write if we say nothing at all. Are these shoes? Shoes, not very interesting. I disagree. Wait, how are you changing? So another day started. It was a day of little importance to our story. I won't bother you with details. The one thing I remember is that even though I played with friends like I always did, I somehow still felt lonely. I didn't even enter my new room until later that night. It was time to go to sleep again. Don't tell me what to do. I think that's just like skipping the day. Ah, sleep, 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 sleep. Sleep, 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 That's how I sleep. Rolling all around. Ah, sleep. Until you just tuck yourself out and pass out. Chapter 2. Labyrinth. I have no idea how many chapters there are to this game. Save? Sure. Uh, here. These buttons. Oh, no. Do I have to hit them in an order? See, they're all frowning now. Oh, never mind. Ooh, I didn't even know that way was blocked. I'm the best at puzzles. That's a wall. I'm the best at puzzles, apparently. Hmm. That either looks like something I should get or should avoid. Ah, that's a spooky face. I think that was something I should have avoided. Ah. 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 All right, let's get another ghost. I ain't a. F Wait, why is it? I'm more concerned that I can't get got by that ghost. Some kind of machinery. So, show of hands, was it a good or a bad idea to run into that guy in red and have this permanent creepy face on the screen? A wanted poster. Ah, oh, that's odd. Ventilation, maybe. The air is still stuffy, though. Ventilation, just like in your mother's room. Huh, there's another person. Poster for some concert. It looks old. Let's see, am I supposed to collect these? Oh, I was expecting it to flash or become more clear. Even though it's already pretty clear. What's this? Nothing of interest, I think. That's probably the way out after I find all these guys. Am I running faster? Ventilation. Looks like a fan. Oh, there's another one. Oh, wait. Ooh. Instructions on how to use a fire extinguisher. Is four enough? No. I am going to be seeing this in my nightmares. Hopefully some of you do too. Hopefully I'm not the only one. Um, is this area? No, I've been here. Still nothing interesting. Hey, another one. Five's not enough. Ugh.
Dang it, that's still a portal thing. It's hard to see any of these guys because my screen is red and they're red. What? Hey! Now it's very clearly. Hello? Oh, I wake up! When you awaken from a deep sleep to something moving or stirring, it can take a few moments for you to truly understand what is happening. Fog of sleep hangs over your eyes and ears, even when lucid. Something was moving. There was no doubt about that. At first I wasn't sure what it was. Everything was dark, almost pitch black. There was enough light creeping in from outside to outline that room. Two thoughts appeared in my mind almost simultaneously. The first was that my parents were in bed because the rest of the house lay both in darkness and silence. The second thought turned to the noise, a noise which had obviously woken me that was it. Bed sheets rustling in the dark and someone breathing. As if some disturbed sleeper was attempting to get all too comfortable on the bottom bunk. I lay there in disbelief thinking that the noise was either my imagination, perhaps just my pet cat finding somewhere uncomfortable to spend the night. It was then that I noticed my door shut as it had been as I'd fallen asleep. Perhaps my mum had checked on it in on me and the cat had sneaked into my room then. Yes, that must have been it. I turned to face the wall, closing my eyes in the vain hope that I could fall back into sleep. As I moved, the rustling noise from underneath me ceased. I thought that I must have disturbed my cat. Quickly I realized that the visitor in the bottom bunk was much less mundane than my pet trying to sleep, and much more sinister. As if all alerted to me and disgruntled by my presence, Sturb Sleeper began to toss and turn violently, a child having a tantrum in their bed. I could hear the sheets twist and turn with increasing ferocity. Fear then gripped me, not like the subtle sense of unease I had experienced earlier, but now potent and terrifying. My heart raced as my eyes panicked. Scanning the almost impenetrable darkness, I let out a cry. As most young boys do, I instinctively shouted on my mother. I could hear something stir on the other side of the house. But as I began to breathe, a sigh of relief that my parents were coming to save me. The bunk bed suddenly started to shake violently, as if gripped by an earthquake, scraping against the wall. I could hear the sheets blow me thrashing around as if tormented by malice. I did not want to jump down to safety. I feared the thing in the bottom bunk would reach out and grab me, pulling me into the darkness, so I stayed there, white knuckles clenching my own blanket like a shroud of protection. The wait seemed like an eternity. What's wrong? Did you have a bad dream? I, I cried and my mother consoled me. Tears of fear followed by relief streamed down my face. Yet through all the horror and relief, I did not tell her why I was so upset. I cannot explain it, but it was as though whatever had been in that bunk would return if I even so much as spoke of it. Whether that was the truth, I do not know, but as a child, I felt as if that unseen menace remained close, listening. My mother lay in the empty bunk promising to stay there until morning. I remember the next day wanting to go anywhere, be anywhere, but in that suffocating room. It was a Saturday, and I played outside, quite happily with my friends. Although our house was not large, we were lucky to have a long, sloping garden in the back. We played there often, as much of it was overgrown, and we could hide in the bushes, climb in the huge sycamore tree which towered above all else and easily imagine ourselves in the throes of a grand adventure. As fun as it all was, occasionally my eye would turn to that small window in my room. Ordinary, slight, 
innocuous, but for me, that thin boundary was the looking glass into a strange, cold pocket of dread. Outside the lush green surroundings of our garden, filled with the smiling faces of my friends, inside the feeling of something in that room, watching me play, waiting for the night when I would be alone, eagerly filled with hate. It may sound strange to you, but by the time my parents ushered me back into that room for the night, I said nothing. I didn't protest, I didn't even make an excuse as to why I couldn't sleep there. I still felt that this thing would be enraged if I so much as spoke of it. Another night came. Maybe it'll be a good dream tonight. Chapter 3 Factorized. I don't even know what that means. We're gonna do some factoring? Ah, well. Everything looks fine and safe here. A huge skull. A banner of a on a long pole. It's too old and torn to make out any details. Hmm. Same room. Huge skull. What's this one say? Yep, same thing. Oh, the skull is waking up. Interesting, interesting. These, these are good signs. Are these details visible? No. Nope. Okay, I thought there was a ladder there. Ah, I'm enraging the skull. I... I was even gonna guess that it's gonna stop me one of these times. Ah, pentagrams. Some kind of altar. That's a good sign. Pentagrams and altars. Picture some kind of green landscape. The picture is in too bad a shape to make out any details. All right, well. What do we think we need to do in here? We got some iron gates. I assume that's what they are. Blocking off maybe a puzzle to open up that area to the left. Take a candle with you. Make everything a little less spooky. Looks almost like the light on the runway at airports. That's weird. I hope there's not like a chase scene in one of these. Because right now I don't really have any idea of where I should head. What is this? Some kind of machine. Hello. Alright, goodbye. He's a nice machine. I'm guessing that... Do you have a word for me? Rude. Uh, I didn't see you the first time. Did that open up like this gate? No. How are you? Um, now does this machine want to talk? I really don't like walking across the altar. Or walking across the pentagram by the altar. Nothing here. That's still blocked off. Huh. It's like something used to pour out of these. Oh, am I? Is are these like blood drains? Am I in hell?
Or am I under some kind of coliseum? If, if demons ever do something like this to you and expect you to complete a puzzle, what happens if you are bad at the puzzle? You just die. Oh. I didn't see that. Alright, so it's not that one. So there's one down. Or, well, I guess it's straight across. Alright, that one looks like it's open. No spooky person? Oh. Hi. A creepy mask. Uh, I don't like this. Oh, it's the face again. Hey, it's the creepy mask face. Yep, whenever you're done, I'm done looking at you. Oh, yeah, that's... that That's wonderful. Yep, look, okay, bye. Um, and look... Wait. A creepy mask. Is it not behind... It's not behind me anymore. I like that this kid just like walked right on top of it. I'm guessing I have to go left and then up. Probably should have checked out the top right first since I was closer, but. Oh no. I thought something was gonna run at me. There's a red liquid pouring out. Cool. Kool Aid. Mountain Dew Code Red. Um, cough syrup. That's about all the red liquids I can think of. Um. Hmm. Maybe there was. Oh wait. That must be the final one. Wait, why would you put two locks here and here? Oh, because it's hard to show them sideways. Alright, what is this pile? Nothing noteworthy. Oh, it's moving. Oh, wait. Now where do I go? Hey, do you guys know where I go? No? I think there was a path up here. Yes. Alright. Nothing spooky that time. What's with the hello, how are you thing? Alright. Last one. Is something gonna happen with this? I mean, this is a star, so I guess head back to the pentagram. And you know, you can wake up from your horrible, horrible nightmare. <sighs> he looks like the guy from the last game I played. Hi! Well, Satan? Uh, what's happening to I think I just lost my soul to Satan. It's funny how certain words can remain hidden from your mind, no matter how blatant or obvious they are. One word came to me that night, lying there in the darkness alone, frightened, aware of a rotten change in the atmosphere, a thickening of the air as if something had displaced it. As I heard the first casual twist of the bed sheets below, the first anxious increase of my heartbeat at the realization that something was once again in the bottom bunk, that word, a word which had been sent into exile, filtered up through my consciousness, breaking free of all repression, gasping for air, screaming, etching, and carving itself into my mind. Ghost! 
Why was the word ghost? Like, that's... As this thought came to me, I noticed that my unwelcome visitor had ceased moving. The bedsheets lay calm and dormant, but they had been replaced by something far more hideous. A slow, rhythmic, rasping breath heaved and escaped from the thing below. I could imagine its chest rising and falling with each sordid, wheezing, and gab garbled breath. I shuddered and hoped beyond all that. It would leave without occurrence. The house lay as it had the previous night, in a thick blanket of darkness. Silence prevailed, all but for the perverted breath of my as yet unseen bunkmate. I lay there terrified. I just wanted this thing to go, to leave me. What did it want? Then something unmistakably chilling transpired. It moved. It moved in a way different than before. When it threw itself in the round in the bottom bunk, it seemed unrestrained, without purpose, almost animalistic. That thing lying there in the darkness, that thing which seemed intent on terrorizing a young boy, calmly and nonchalantly sat up. Its labored breathing had become louder. Now only a mattress and a few flimsy wooden slats separated my body from the unearthly breath below. I lay there, my eyes filled with tears, a fear which mere words cannot relate to you or anyone else coursed through my veins. Wait, quit! Is he playing with himself? I would not have believed that this fear could have heightened and heightened, but I was so wrong. I imagined what this thing would look like sitting there, listening from below my mattress, hoping to catch the slightest hint that I was awake. Imagination then turned to an unnerving reality and began to touch the wooden slatch which my mattress sat upon. It seemed to caress them carefully, running what I imagined to be fingers and hands across the surface of the wood. Then with great force it prodded angrily between the two slats into the mattress. Even through the padding, it felt as though someone had viciously stuck their fingers into my side. I let out an almighty cry, and the wheezing, shaking, and moving thing in the bunk below replied in kind by violently brought vibrating the bunk as it had done the night before. Small flecks of paint powdered onto my blanket from the wall as the frame of the bed scraped along it backwards and forwards. Once again, I was bathed in light. And there stood my mother, loving, caring as she always was, with a comforting hug and calming words which eventually subdued my hysteria. Of course she asked what was wrong, but I could not say. I dared not say. I simply said one word over and over and over again. pattern of events continued for weeks, if not months. Night after night, I would awaken to the sound of rustling sheets. Each time I would scream so as to not provide this abomination with time to prod and feel for me. With each cry, the bed would shake violently, stopping with the arrival of my mother who would spend the rest of the night in the bottom bunk, seemingly unaware of the sinister force torturing her son nightly. Along the way, I managed to feign illness a few times, come up with other less than truthful reasons for sleeping in my parents' bed. Most often than not, I would be alone for the first few hours of each night in that place, the room where the light from outside did not sit right, alone with that thing. With time, you can become desensitized to almost anything, no matter how horrific. I had come to realize that. For whatever reason, this thing could not harm. I hear banging in my house. This thing could not harm me when my mother was present. I am sure the same would have been said for my father. But as loving as he was, waking him from sleep was almost impossible. Waking me on the other hand was no trouble at all, thanks to the nightmares.
more. Wow. I am not I was not expecting more. Um say yes. Light. Much better place for an outro. Not for any particular reason, but yeah, that was definitely scary. And like it def RP. It. I'm trying to think. It didn't even it didn't rely heavily on jump scares. There was like one when I was in that cave, and then that bloody face kind of be in there. Some flashes of light, which I don't consider those jump scares. I think that was more just trying to emphasize what was happening. Um, yeah, I hate hearing voices in, or, not, well yes, I hate hearing voices coming from my house. But I also hate hearing noises coming from my house when I have my headphones on. Because you know how you can you can't hear them, but you can kind of hear them. And if you can kind of hear them, you really don't know what they are, so that doesn't help. Um, yeah, overall, very spooky game. There's apparently at least four chapters in it. I'm sure the thing on Steam store would say actually how many chapters there are to this game. So if you'd like to play this game for yourself, it, there will be a link down in the description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope I wasn't the only one scared. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.